Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday Eve to you. I'm Rob Evans. Welcome to Daybreak Plus. We're breaking down all the news you may have missed overnight. We're digging deep into the matters that matter to you. And overnight, breaking news, history at the Texas Capitol. While you were sleeping, the Texas House gave initial approval on establishing a private school voucher program. At about 2 o'clock this morning, House lawmakers made the initial passage of Senate Bill 2, creating a billion-dollar education savings account program known as school vouchers, of course, allowing parents to use tax dollars to pay for their child's private education. Now, according to the Texas Tribune, it's the first time since 1957 this has happened. 85 lawmakers voted in favor, 63 voted against. Now, under the House's ex uh, education savings account plan, ESA will be equal to 85% of the per student funding districts get from the state, about 11,500 per student. With disabilities, students get as much as $30,000 per student. But a group of House lawmakers tried to amend this bill to put school vouchers in the hands of voters. That amendment failed. Now, for many lawmakers, it was a difficult and frustrating day in the House. Here's State Representative Gina Hinojosa. It has been a long, long fight. We have fought hard. We have fought for years, and I curse this fight every day because we have spent years focused on a voucher program that even the fiscal note of this bill recognizes will mostly go to students already in private schools at a time when our public schools are in crisis. Now, for other lawmakers, including uh, Ellen Troxclair, it was a celebration. Here's what she had to say. I cannot believe that we are on the precipice of finally, finally giving parents and students the choice and the education that they deserve. Parents have been waiting for this day for decades in Texas. Too now, the House still has to vote on SB2 for the third reading before they send it back to the Senate to work out the differences between the two versions. The governor said he is ready to sign it into law as soon as it happens. And it was a very tense debate. And in fact, at one point, emotions ran pretty high. Take a listen to what happened. Benefits Mr. for the Speaker, poor does Mr. nothing Money for what but purpose? take from the poor and I have give another, to the rich. I have another I'm not done with my Mr. answer. He got one. Well, Representative Brooks Landgraf right there of Odessa was presiding. He broke the gavel trying to restore order. The gavel then broke the glass. Well, hey, at least he picked up a broom. It delayed the debate for more than half an hour while he and his fellow lawmakers and House staff cleaned up the mess. Hey, at least he cleaned up his own mess, though, right? That was nice of him. Now, the House initially passed its school finance bill. House Bill 2 includes nearly $8 billion for public schools. Now, there's Senate Bill 2, House Bill 2, different ones, right? It would increase the base amount of money districts receive for students with disabilities, as we talked about earlier. It bumps up teacher pay for between $3,500 and $7,000, increases the basic allotment, which is how much money the district gets per student, by $395 per student. Now, this legislature hasn't increased that basic allotment since 2019. Under HB2, the allotment will be tied to property value growth, so it would automatically increase every two years. The House will take one more vote on it before it can be sent to the Senate. And some of Northwest Austin homeowners are frustrated as insurance delays stall their rebuilding efforts. Remember the home explosion on Double Spur Loop on Sunday morning damaged at least 24 other homes in the area. Samantha Lear says her home was impacted and she is ready to make repairs. She says her insurance provider, though, is slow to assess the damage because there's an ongoing investigation into what caused it. Lear says her neighbors are in similar situations. Take a listen. Hearing back from the insurance company and them unwilling to come over and figure it out with us and help us out, you, you just wonder, what do you pay for monthly? You know, you don't live in a tragic situation constantly. So when one happens, you do expect your insurance company to be there for you. According to the Office of Public Insurance Council, most homeowners insurance policies do cover damage to your home and belongings if there is an explosion, but every policy has limits. Experts recommend filing a claim right away, 
document the damage, but only make temporary repairs until your adjuster approves permanent repairs. 706 right now, let's get a look at our weather. weather and traffic. Grace and Hannah Grace start with you. What do you expect today? Felt good walking out the door. Yeah, no, it does feel good outside, Rob. Temperatures are certainly where they need to be for a springtime morning. 69 in Westlake, Pflugerville at 70 already, and Maynard at 69 as well. We've also got a couple other 70s on the map. Give or take a couple degrees, especially out towards the hill country. Most of us in the mid-60s to start off the day. And those breezes, that's what's making it feel much better today. We didn't have that in place yesterday, so it really felt really muggy outside. But we've got gusts anywhere from 18 to 25 miles per hour out there over towards Fredericksburg, 24 miles per hour. We can expect that elevated wind throughout the day today. So while it will be a bit muggy, I think those breezes will certainly help us out with that. All right, our Thursday, 89 degrees expected for the Austin Metro, close to 90. I do think a couple of us will get there, but our records for today are 99 and 100 degrees. So at least it's not that hot. You can be thankful for that at least. Now heading into Easter weekend, we do have a more active forecast on the map. 40% chance for thunderstorms on Saturday, nighttime 70% chance, and then Sunday we head towards a 40% chance for those morning thunderstorms again. So a bit of an active weather pattern. We're going to need to be watching the radar as we head throughout the weekend. The good news and the bad news I'd say is a lot of this activity is happening overnight. So Friday into Saturday morning, you can see most of that activity is out towards the hill country. This continues until 5, 6 a.m. And then as we shift into Saturday, Saturday afternoon, I know there are some, you know, pre Easter events going on. So by 1 p.m., most of us are going to be a dry along the I 35 corridor as well as east of that, too. However, out towards the hill country, there could be some lingering showers, maybe an isolated thunderstorm for the afternoon. But I do think most of us across central Texas will be pretty dry. Now, we also have to watch the radar Saturday night into Sunday. So I've got uh, 1230, so just past midnight paused here. We start to see a little bit of activity kind of edge into the hill country there, but it really won't be until about 5, 6 a.m. that we see um, some more significant moisture in our atmosphere. So our severe risk is going to be very low Friday into Saturday, and then Saturday into Sunday, we actually get up to that level two slight risk out of five there for the hill country areas, and then our I-35 corridor is in the marginal level one risk. So we've got this paused at about 6, 7 a.m. for your Sunday morning. You can see that cold front will start to shift through our region. Hopefully this moves on pretty fast so we can get to our Easter activities for Sunday afternoon. I do think it will be much drier as we gear towards 2, 4 p.m. that day. High temperatures on your Easter Sunday are going to be about 83 degrees and then we level off into the mid 80s heading into next week. All right, Hannah, I know you got some big updates, especially for our BK friends out there, right? Oh goodness, say a prayer for our BK friends because we've got a good old fashioned hot mess developing here. So a couple of updates. If you are just waking up once again, this is now a full closure coming and going from the BK area on Texas 71. So initially it was just the westbound lanes and then I started to see it light up red and the eastbound lanes. Sure enough, full closure both sides of the highway. And what's tricky about this neck of the woods is there's very minimal alternatives. I've done several stories with this before and it's very frustrating this gridlock that we're going to be working with today. So you can try to peel off to Cypress Creek. It just depends where you work and that's what's once again really difficult moving through that area. Um, if you're traveling westbound. You can try to get on RM620 and then work your way up towards Lake Travis High School, but I am riding late to work and school passes for our B Cave commuters today because 71 is just completely acting up and we've got this crash uh, developing once again and working to learn the circumstances of this. If it happens to be fatal, of course, we can anticipate uh, the closure is going to be going on for a good while, so really hate to see that for the start of the morning and I'll be sure to keep you updated. For the rest of us, at least, it is pretty quiet uh, for the Metro, still under 40 five minutes, all that stop and go coming in from Buda. So business as usual there uh, coming in from Round Rock today. You can see we're under 20 minutes traveling southbound on I-35 approaching 183. Uh, it is slowing down a little bit, though, as soon as you get to 183 at uh, 44 miles per hour. Mopac's looking great. Uh, we are 20 minutes pretty much across the board, even less than that, traveling northbound today. And uh, Loop 360 looking really good as well, under 10 minutes. But once again, anyone traveling through Bee Cave, you're going to need some extra time. Rob? 
All right, Hannah, thank you very much. Today, Austin police plan to tell us more about an explosive device found at a South Austin home. Police say it was found on Tuesday, and yesterday officers determined the only way to safely dispose of it was to blow it up. So police set it off last night, and the explosion caused a lot of damage, not just to the home, but also to the home next door. Look at that right there. My goodness. Wow. You can hear the reaction there. Uh, Matt Pudiak lives nearby, and we talked to him just before that explosion. Take a listen. I mean, pretty safe area, nice area, so it's definitely weird to see this stuff, but not surprised. The fact that there's still explosives or whatever it is is yeah, definitely uneasy, and my daughter's uh, in elementary school is just right up there. Now, investigators say they did detain one person. We hope to learn more about what the device was and how it was discovered. When we get an update today at 11 a.m., look at all that debris, though, raining down across the street. Well, the battle between the White House and the courts is heating up over a man mistakenly deported. A judge now threatening to start a contempt investigation. ABC's Nicole D'Antonio has the latest. This morning, growing concerns surrounding the deportation of Kilmar Abrego Garcia, the Maryland husband and father who the administration admits was wrongfully sent to El Salvador. Maryland Senator Chris Van Hollen now pushing for Abrego Garcia's release. And the U.S. courts have found that he was illegally taken from the United States, and the governor, government of El Salvador has no evidence that he was part of MS-13. Why is El Salvador continuing to hold him in CCOT? A unanimous Supreme Court ordered the administration to let him return to the U.S. for a due process hearing. But the White House insists he will never live in the United States again and is criticizing the senator's visit. It's appalling and sad that Senator Van Hollen and the Democrats applauding his trip to El Salvador today are incapable of having any shred of common sense or empathy for their own constituents and our citizens. Abrego Garcia was living in Maryland after entering the country illegally. The 29-year-old was arrested and deported last month, along with hundreds of other men accused of being gang members. ABC News has learned new details about Abrego Garcia's past. In 2021, his wife obtained a temporary protective order against him, in which she said she was slapped, hit with an object, and detained against her will. The case was later closed, and his wife is now pleading for Abrego Garcia's return. Now, a federal judge is threatening to hold the Trump administration in criminal contempt for violating his orders last month to turn around those two planes carrying deportees to El Salvador. The White House is vowing to appeal, saying, quote, the president is 100 percent committed to ensuring that terrorist and criminal illegal migrants are no longer a threat to Americans. Nicole D'Antonio, ABC News, Washington. Well, April is a child abuse awareness month. It is a time to raise awareness and to promote efforts to prevent child abuse and neglect. And each week here on KVU, Hannah Rucker introduces you to different kids in Texas foster care who are in need of finding a forever family. And this week, we introduce you to Sebastian. Up, 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 there we go. Sebastian is a seven-year-old boy in Texas foster care, and he likes to keep his eyes in the sky. I had the pleasure of meeting up with this sweet little boy in East Austin at the Austin Radio Control Association, where we got to enjoy a morning of flying model airplanes. It was easy to tell Sebastian's caseworker, Cynthia Padilla, cares very much for Sebastian. What is it doing? Flying fast. It's flying fast. Good job. And she really wants to find him an environment where he is cherished and so very loved for the rest of his childhood. He is obsessed with anything remote control. So remote control cars, remote control planes, and is obsessed with space. Astronauts and stars and the galaxy. Isn't that right? Yeah. Here we go. There you go. And he even got to use a buddy box and a simulator to see what it would be like to control a plane. 
can fly there, but at home. You want to fly? You want to take it home? You can hear him say throughout the morning, can I take an airplane home? And sure enough, the kind folks at the Austin Radio Control Association sent him home with a small mini plane. I thought you should bring one home. We got you that one. Wow. And the one you can build. Those are yours. They take home, okay? Yes. And we got you a hat if you want it. You want to wear a hat? Yes. Yeah, he loves hats. Yeah, that was a little big, but... I fit him just fine. Now, to learn more about adopting Sebastian, look for this story on kvu.com slash forever families. And we leave you this morning with something to talk about. Turns out we may not be alone in the universe. Astronomers studying a massive planet more than 100 light years from Earth. This is incredible what you're about to hear, though. ABC's Rhiannon Alley reports that astronomers are calling the discovery a revolutionary moment. Take a look. It could be a major discovery in the search for extraterrestrial life. This moment in history of science will be viewed as a paradigm shift in our search for life. Using the James Webb Telescope, scientists say they have detected unusual gases in the atmosphere of a faraway planet. Gases which, here on Earth, are only made by living things. T -t -t For decades, Hollywood has imagined what first contact with alien life might look like. But the real search for life has led scientists to a giant planet far outside our solar system. K218b is a giant ocean-covered planet about 120 light years away. We have found uh, signs of biosignature molecules, either DMS or DMDS or both, both of which are produced uniquely by life here on Earth. The big find? Two compounds in K2-18b's atmosphere that here on Earth come primarily from tiny microbes in our ocean. To be clear, scientists are not claiming aliens are out there. Not yet. This is a monumental uh, discovery. It is very important, but we also have to be extremely cautious. We also want to do more theoretical and observational studies to make sure that there is absolutely no other way we can make this molecule without life. Scientists say this is especially encouraging because it shows we might be able to spot signs of life, even from light years away. We are basically establishing here that we can detect that kind of like signature, those kinds of uh, planets and uh, biosignatures in them. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. That's pretty cool. And that is it for our Daybreak Plus. Let us know what you think about it or else what you want to talk about, other things on your mind. Text us at 512-459-9442. Again, 512-459-9442. You have to text it. Calling it doesn't work. You can also message me on socials if you want. Rob Evans TV at uh, Instagram, Facebook, or X. And stick around because the Daybreak continues right here on KVU Plus. Goodbye, everybody.